Hi, my name is Tiffany and I'm a teen librarian for Fresno County Public Library. I'd like to welcome you to our brand new Digital Summer at Your Library program. We may look a little different, but we still have the same amount of fun offered for June and July. I'd like to take this time to remind everyone to visit our website at fresnolibrary.org backslash summer. There you can find a lot more information on all the fun stuff we have offered for Fresno County, such as grab and go lunches for kids and teens, take and make crafts for teens, and a reading program for all ages. Again, go ahead and stop by fresnolibrary.org backslash summer for more information. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm here today for the Fresno County Library Summer Series to start off a fun adventure of quick pickling. Everybody is into preserving now that we're in quarantine mode and growing victory gardens, so to speak. So what better to save it for later than make some pickles? Everybody likes pickles. The best part of doing your own is you can flavor them however you want. You can make them sweet, spicy, whatever your family likes. So we have a few things laid out here. I'll cover the ingredients real quick and then we'll go from there. So we have, you take a pound of vegetables. In this case, we're going to do cucumbers that I've sliced a little bit some fresh green green beans and then we have our spices we have peppercorns coriander seed mustard seed salt sugar a little bit of dill and for those that like it spicy a little bit of red pepper flakes we're going to save the onions because that's the next recipe after this we have one cup of water and one cup of white vinegar if you want you can substitute apple cider vinegar for the white vinegar or you can do a half and half. From there you're just going to take your vegetables, wash and clean them first and you're going to want to slice them very small about probably a quarter of an inch. You don't want to use a real soft vegetable like a squash because they're going to get too soft by the time they're done pickling but a Kirby or the small Armenian cucumbers work really well for this. I like the crinkle cut edges, so that's why I'm doing that, but you can also just use a straight knife and make little rounds. If you want to do them in um, spears, you can do that as well, but don't make them too big. Probably I would take a cucumber like this and cut it into either half or quarter and put it in the jar that way. The rounds are a little bit easier. I'm using small jars today, that way everything fits and I can change the seasoning as I want. For the green beans, all you're going to do is take them, wash them, and you're going to take the ends off. From there, if you have the tall jars, you can leave them long. I like cutting them in half, again, bite size, so that way it's easier to eat. And especially if you have kids, it's easier for them to pick up with their fingers and goof around a little bit while they're eating. Not too much. So. All right, so one tool that every cook should have is a bench scraper so it's easier to pick up large amounts and put them in a bowl and to clean up your area afterwards. It's also a really good idea to wipe your area down with um, a soap and water solution and then uh, wipe it with a clean damp cloth to get all the soap off. Before you get started you want to make sure that you keep your area as clean and tidy as possible because otherwise bad things could happen down the road. Another thing I'm going to mention with knives is always be very careful. Use a sharp knife. Don't use a dull knife. Otherwise, you're fighting it too much when you're trying to cut the vegetables. And you're actually more likely to hurt yourself with a dull knife than a sharp knife. Just be very careful. And again, the chef grasp is you make a pinch, wrap your fingers around it so you have more control. If you happen to drop a knife, don't grab for it let it fall all the way to the ground and then pick it up. You're more likely to get hurt if you're grabbing for a falling knife than just letting it land. Make sure your feet are out of the way. All right, so now we have all the things together. Let me grab a couple of jars and we'll get started. So I've got my jars. These are eight ounce canning jars that have been cleaned 
with soap and water and then sterilized in a water bath for 10 minutes. That's a, a boiling water bath and then you can let them cool in the water while you get the rest of the ingredients ready or you can take them out with tongs and let them air dry on, in this case I used a cookie sheet with a clean dish towel on it so they could air dry. You want everything again as clean as possible to prevent contamination or anything funky growing if you don't clean things properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dry ingredients. That was the mustard seed, coriander seed, black peppercorns, about a teaspoon of dill wheat. We have two teaspoons of canning salt. You can also use kosher salt. If you do, it's use one tablespoon. And then we have one tablespoon of white sugar. One of the good things of doing your own canning is you can change the flavors. If you like it spicier or sweeter, you can adjust accordingly. And because we want spicy, we're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I'm gonna stir that up and distribute evenly between the four jars or as evenly as possible. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pack the jars and I prefer the green beans cut in half because I think they fit in a little bit nicer and look a little bit tidier and they're more fun to eat than trying to wrangle a, a fully long green bean that's about four inches long versus bite sized. We want it nice and easy and fun and no stress. And if you get one that's a little bit too long, you can always cut it smaller or put it in the other jar. But you wanna leave about a half an inch of headroom in the jar when you put the liquid in, so that way everything is under the liquid. So that's about full enough for this one. And we'll do the other one. And if you have small kids around, you can have them help fill the jars. Just make sure that they wash their hands really good with soap and water first. If they have long hair, you might want to have them tie it up just to keep it out of the way. But this is a good way to get children to learn about their food and have fun making it. So that way they're more apt to eat their vegetables. Okay, so for this one we're going to do the Cut up cucumbers. Again, you can use Kirby or Armenian. If all you can find are the regular plain cucumbers, you can use those as well. Um, just keep in mind that they do have a little bit more seeds and might be a little bit more on the bitter side initially. These are quick pickles, so you're gonna be eating them within a couple of weeks. So these are not intended for long-term storage, so we're not going to be canning them in the hot water bath afterwards. We're just going to be storing them in the fridge. All right, so we're on the tail end of this. And if you have extra vegetables left over, that's fine. You can use them in soups, stews, freeze them, anything you choose, or you can make another batch of pickles down the road. All right, so we're, that's a little more. All right, so those are about full. So you have filled within about half inch of the top. And probably the easiest way is going to be combining the two, the water and the vinegar. And this is the part where I try not to spill it. And you're just gonna fill it up to about a quarter inch from the top.
So again, you want to keep as much of the vegetable under the liquid as possible. So once that's done, you're going to take your lids, and again, if you have small children, this is the fun part as well. You just tighten it, and you're going to want to shake it up. And that's basically all there is to it. When you get these done, you're going to want to put them in the fridge, store them for about two weeks, and then they should be all set and ready to enjoy with picnics or lunches or just a good old snack. You can change this up by adding in peppers or any other vegetable. Cauliflower is good. So would carrots, if it's a really dense vegetable, you might want to steam it or par cook it for a few minutes, blanch it in hot water, and then cool it off with some ice water. Just enough to soften it up a little bit so that way the acid from the vinegar can soften and the pickling process will go a little bit quicker. But um, that's about all there is for quick pickles. Give it about two weeks and you'll have a snack. All right, give me just a moment to get set up and we will do the pickled onions. All right now, now that we have the pickled green beans and pickled pickles, underway. We're going to do a quick batch of pickled onions. Pickled onions work well on just about anything from hamburgers and hot dogs to topping your favorite salad or even nachos. Who doesn't love pickles in the summertime? Again, this is a recipe that you can all adapt to yourself, whatever your family likes, if you like it spicy, sweeter, etc. Um, this one we're going to do a little bit different. We have apple cider vinegar and white vinegar, water, some shredded onions. I cut those ahead of time so that way you don't have to see me cry. <laughs> onion keeper for the leftover onion. It takes generally one whole onion to do a full batch. We're doing a short batch today. And then in here I have some kosher salt. And then to make it sweet, we have a little bit of honey. You can also use maple syrup if you want to make it vegan or to change the flavor to be more floral instead of, or use honey for more floral and maple for just more of a, a candy sweetness. Again, the choice is yours. So we're going to mix everything in the beaker. We start off with the apple cider vinegar and the white vinegar, the salt, and we'll save those for last. For the honey, I would recommend using a silicone spatula or small spoon when you're scraping it from the bowl. It's less likely to stick and it'd be easier to mix. You can also do this ahead of time and heat it up if you have a problem with the syrup or the honey dissolving. But you want to give that a good stir to make sure everything is all contained. All right, so I'm going to pop this in the microwave for just a moment to heat it up before we pour it over the onions in the jar. Alright, I've pulled the mixture out of the microwave and heated it up for about a minute and a half. If you're using the stove, you want to bring it to a simmer. That way the honey is dissolved, all the salt goes into the suspension, and it's ready to use for the onions. So again, I have 8 ounce canning jars that have been thoroughly cleaned and sterilized in water. I have shredded red onion. You could use yellow or white onion if that's your preference. I happen to like red. I think it goes better with salads and on hamburgers. So you're filling the jar again to about 
a half inch from the top. And this one would be a little bit easier to pack in. You want to make sure that you get as much of the onion as you can in there. If you wanted to add some peppercorns or red chili flakes, you could do so. You could also add in shredded peppers, which would go very well with this. The main thing is to make sure that the jar is filled properly, so that way all of the vegetable is covered in the brine. All right, give that a quick stir. And do this this way. So you're just going to fill it up to a quarter inch at the top. And this one you don't need to shake up because all of the seasoning is incorporated into the liquid. Okay. Again, you're going to let this sit on the counter to cool and you're going to make it finger tight. You don't want it loose, but you do want it pretty tight so that way you're not going to have any liquid escape when you move it around. Once it's cool, you move it to your refrigerator and let them sit along with the other vegetables for about two weeks. If you're in a hurry, this one can be done and be ready to eat in as little as 30 minutes. If you want a more acidic or, or sour pickle, then increase the vinegar a little bit and store it in the fridge. But if you need something quick for dinner, you could do this with the onions or shaved carrots. Once it cools down, it's ready to eat and you can enjoy in, like I said, 30 to 45 minutes. All right, it's been a few days. Now we're going to pull the pickles out of the fridge and take a look. So if you notice, the red onion turned a really shade, a really nice shade of pink. It has really nice texture and is a little bit sweet. We actually tried some of these the day after we made them and they were really good on meatloaf and on hamburgers. They still have a little bit of texture and bite. Nicely sweet though, with not too much tang. The pickles turn out really nice too. They have a little bit of crunch to them. If you notice, they're not super floppy. They still are somewhat rigid. And again, if you like a pickle that is a little bit sweeter, you can add more sugar. I would not recommend using a sugar substitute. I'm not sure how that would work in the recipe. And I wouldn't go less on the sugar also because otherwise it's going to be too tart and tangy and it wouldn't be as good of a mouthfeel or eating experience with it as it is. Um, I'll be posting the recipes on the website www.forktravel.com. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, go ahead and drop me a line there. And remember, life is too short for bad food.